So let's attempt to put our join into action here. So you'll see that I've got three tables that are related. They, they include related data here. On the one hand, I've got a table with a list of students. I've got seven students here just with their surname and their first name. I've got a table with the subjects. So that lists the subject ID, the name of that subject, and whomever the teacher is. And then I've got this results table here. And the one that's probably the most confusing is this results table because it doesn't look like it has a whole lot of data. And that is because it lists the student ID here as a one uh, in, in this first row and our subject ID one in this row with the result. Now the only bit of data here that um, the, that we'd really wanna be using in any circumstance would really be the A, um, the, the result in this instance. But what this is doing is it's saying, hey, student ID one, that is Harry Potter, got an A in whatever subject ID one is. So you can think about why it is that I haven't um, written this down as the actual subject name and change this from, from subject ID to subject name. The reason being that then of course I have it in two different tables. And let's say that um, this is now gonna, the, the subject name is gonna be changed from English to Engl English literature, then I'll need to change it here in both instances. By comparison at the moment, if I keep it just as subject ID one, I change it in one location and it flows down. So let's look at how to create this within PyCharm using, using Python and um, we will connect these tables together. So you see that I've just got a generic PyCharm project here and the first thing that I'm going to do is I want to create my tables or create my database file with the tables associated with it. So I'm going to right click on the parent folder here um, and I've just called this um, studentsdb or studentsdb. I'm going to go new python file and I'm going to call this db create tables. Now just within this I'm going to start off by going import SQLite 3. I'm going to create a connection SQLite 3 and I want to connect to a database here that I'm going to call students.db. I then want to create a cursor, connie.cursor, and I'm going to give myself a bit of space here, and I'm going to say connie.commit and connie.close. Hit um, Control S and save there. And this won't look like it does very much, but when I go right click run, creates a students.db over here. If you've got PyCharm Professional, which we should, you can drag and drop that over to here and, uh, and navigate through your database as you would so choose there. So the, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go about creating my tables. And the way that I do that is I do c, uh, c.execute and I open up three uh, double inverted commas here. And I'm gonna create all three of these tables all in one hit. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go copy and I'm gonna paste that twice. Um, again, in PyCharm, you can select something and go control D to duplicate. Um, if you so choose. So now within these, I'm gonna go about creating the table. And to this, I'm gonna say create table if not exists, students, and I'm going to add a bracket here. Now, if you get errors and whatnot, um, because it's not recognized in SQL, you might need to change um, your SQL dialect, but uh, even if you are um, getting errors thrown to you, hopefully, um, PyCharm will sort that out each time you go about running it. So I now need to specify some things. I'm gonna say um, integer, primary key, auto increment. So this is creating this students table. So that's this one here. So table students, so one ID, surname, and first name. Let me skip back into here. And so I'm now going to say surname uh, of text. Oop, make sure I spell that correctly. And I want first name text. And now I can go right click run and it looks like nothing happens, but I'm gonna assume that that um, table has been created. Now you might ask why it is that I've got this if not exists in here. The reason that I've got that is that it uh, means that now as I go back into here and I say, hey, c.execute and I wanna create a new table, create table if not exists, um, and I'm gonna create my subjects table with my bracket here. If I were to not have this, if not exists, it would never actually reach this line here because it would go about trying to create that table and would throw an error. So that's handy just to have that if not if not exists in there. So I'm gonna have within subjects, I'm gonna say also an integer of primary key auto increment no, with a comma. I want the subject name of text and I want the teacher, which is also just gonna be text. I'm gonna come down to here and I'm going to create a new table. Also, if not exists, and this is gonna be results. And I want to make sure that I'm adding uh, a few bits of information here. I want this to be student ID integer, and I want this to be oops, subject ID also integer, and I want result. I'm just gonna make that a text. Now you could make that a single character if you want, but maybe sometimes we want plus, minus, star, whatever. 
Now you might ask why it is that these integers do not have a primary key associated with them. And if I were to skip back into here, you would of course recognize that these are uh, foreign keys, that this student ID is gonna be pulled out of here, and my subject ID is gonna be pulled out of here. So that's why there, there is no primary key on this particular table here. Uh, so again, feel free to run that just to make sure that your um, various tables have been created. But uh, the next stage we're gonna do is we're going to go on and populate these. So I'm going to right click on students DB, Go new Python file, I'm going to say db oh, populate. And within here, I'm going to follow a fairly uh, familiar pattern. You can, of course, copy and paste if you so choose. Uh, make sure that I'm um, connecting this to the correct database, having a Connie.commit and a Connie.close. Oh, uh, Alright, we're also going to need a um, cursor here in order to be performing our commands. All right, so this is, as always, our core that we're going to be coming back to. Now, there's going to be a lot of um, typing here that I'm going to skip over so that uh, so that you don't have to sit and watch me type, but you just need to bear in mind that this is what I'm going to be adding. I'm going to be adding each one of these students, then I'm going to be doing a separate um, c.execute for each one of these subjects and a separate one linking all of these results in. So it does get a bit tedious because you do need to type all of it, so feel free to um, pause on this screen if you do want to see what it is that I'm typing um, as I go ahead and, uh, and add these. Just again, bear in mind that I'm going to be doing this three times, so I'm going to want to give myself three different executes. I'm going to populate each one of them one after another. So happy typing, everyone. Um, and you'll see here that I've got a couple of things that we should point out. First one is that I'm using these insert into students. So this is the table and we're inserting it into uh, two different fields here, one surname, one first name. You'll see that I don't specify, I come back into here, the ID. And that's because you might remember when we created the table, we were doing that as a primary key auto, um, auto increment. But I've gone about entering into the surname and the first name. The same here with subjects. I've gone about just adding the subject name and the teacher, if I were to skip back um, into here. Um, and you'll see that each time I go about uh, inserting multiple lines here, I've got a comma after each one of them. This one is particularly tedious, but feel free to just go and dump in whatever um, uh, dummy data you want here. You don't have to copy these exactly, just as long as you've got something that looks fairly similar. So I'm going to go and see if I've got any errors here, and I go right-click Run. So it didn't bring up any errors, but this is where um, I might go and query this. So I'm going to go right-click on StudentsDB, go New Python File, and I'm going to say DB Select. And I'm going to copy and paste my same stuff as in before. And this time I just want to say select star from students. And I want to say uh, print c, c dot fetch all. So this is going to select everything from this students table and print it off. And we'll see what data we get out of this. So just here within the console. So it looks like everything's coming out of there. I might just run subjects and make sure the data comes out of there. And finally, the third table was results. So I'm going to go right click and run and I get all of my data out of there. So this, this must mean then that all of my data has been populated in. So with that all populated, the next stage uh, beyond our DB select is to go about creating a few joins. So with our table created here, uh, I'm going to go right click on the parent folder, go new Python file. I'm going to say uh, DB select and we're going to add the uh, append there of join. And I'm just going to take everything straight out of my DB select here, so just this same code, and I'm going to dump it into here. And this is where we're going to start doing some joins. Now, whenever you are doing joins, it's really worthwhile just keeping in your head what sort of data we've got here and what might be valuable for us to get out. So let's say that we want to start um, getting a list of, say, students with what subjects they're doing, or, or even, even the other way around, right? So, so list the subject or the student, sort of um, piece it together and say, hey, this student does that. Well, this is spread across really all three tables because we might say, hey, this student ID one um, is studying, um, which is, is, is Potter, uh, subject ID two, so in mathematics, and he got a B, all right? Likewise, student number two, studying eight, got a C, all right? So we might uh, work about how to, how to join these two tables first. So we're gonna skip back into here. I'm gonna say, uh, initially, um, select star from students. And so if I just right click, hey, this, this grabs all of this stuff here. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to separate this out so that we have um, three of this here so that we can do this across multiple lines as normal I'll just work out some formatting and here we go so now let's say that we want to um, gather some specific data out of this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say well I might get the student surname and the student first name 
from students. And if I were to run this, you'd get you know exactly what you'd expect here. All right, run surname, first name, etc., etc., a list of them, a tubule of those. So what I now want to do is I want to join this stuff together. So I'm going to use an inner join, and what I want to do is I want to jo join the results table. All right, so I'm taking this table here and I'm joining it with that one. So I need to specify that. And the way that I do that is, if I skip back into my code here, I'm going to um, add the results table, and I need to work out what I'm joining which column onto which other column. So I'm going to say I'm joining the results table where the ID, student ID field, is equal to the students.id. And this looks a lot more confusing than what it is. What I'm doing is I'm saying, hey, we want to connect this table results with uh, where this student ID column, so that's this one, is equal to this stuff here. So this is me associating Weasley's ID2 with these students over here. So let's see what we can get out of this. So if I now go right click run, you'll see that I just get all the same stuff again because that's what I've specified. The real benefit to this though is that what I can now do now that I'm joining this stuff together is I can now pull stuff from the other table. So just here after comma where I say select surname and first name, I might say well I also want um, results and we'll see what we get out of this. Right click run and you'll see that now I'm getting Potter Harry with an A and Potter Harry with a B, right? all this stuff here. Now this doesn't really mean too much for me just yet because I, I haven't been able to associate the, um, the name of the subject, but we can work on that shortly. Now to make this a little bit more reasonable, what I am going to do is I'm going to say uh, my data, in fact I'll call this output, is equal to c.fetchall, and then I'm going to say for item in output, ditch this stuff here with my colon, print item. So now when I go about running this, it'll put it onto um, each of these different lines here. It just makes it a little bit more readable. So now I have my inner join on this stuff, and you can see about how, um, you know, what other data you might want to connect to here. So, hey, I want to connect result. Well, maybe I also want to get this, uh, get result.student uh, ID, uh, subject ID rather, subject ID. And now when I go right click run, you'll see that I have got an error and this is going to be because I have mixed up my table name here. Right click run again. All right, now it's important to note the distinction between what I've got here and what I've got over here. And to demonstrate, we'll come back to here. Um, when I've got a, a field here from another table, it's often really good practice for you to specify that, hey, this subject ID is coming from this results table. So this is results table dot subject id and the reason why that's going to be very important oops, I'll mix that around the reason why this is going to be important is when we go about connecting some of these later you'll note that in fact i don't think i call this subject id i think i just called this field id and if i were to specify hey give me the id of something and if i've got these two tables connected it's going to freak out because it doesn't know if i want the id from table students or the id from table subjects so it's important to make that distinction there so just as another um, last bit to add before we're, before we're done with this part is, so just bear in mind as well that we can add um, other stuff here such as order by, and let's say that I want to order this by surname, so I want to get um, all of these um, sorted here in alphabetic order, I can do that, right click run and this will give them to me in straight alphabetic order. Let's say I want to sort this by uh, subject ID, I can do that as well. So then I can get it all sorted by, hey, in English, that's one. This is what my three students got. All right, you can see how this might change what data you get back if you're then going to pump it out into a web framework or something similar. Possibly of more use is that I can also combine this with a where statement. So I could say where uh, surname is equal to uh, Granger. And I can say right click run. And this will just pull out this one student with all their results. Of course, Hermione gets A's for everything across all of her um, five subjects. Or maybe I want to get this across subject ID and where subject ID is equal to um, one. So I want to get all of the students and what their results are across um, across English. Or I can specify this again, right? And you can be as dynamic as you want here. So this inner join really belongs most with this select. It's really just modifying that. You can add your where, you can add your order by, you can do um, all sorts of funky stuff with that afterwards. Now one thing that's not very useful here is that I'm still getting this subject ID. What I really want to do is make sure that I can replace that subject ID with the subject name because that's a bit more meaningful than this one. So I, what I can do quite easily is take this subject ID in exactly the same way we're going to inner, inner join a third table into this same query that's going to link this here with that there. All right? So that then instead of me printing one, it will print English. So let's have a look at how we do that. Similar to before, I can just come straight below this one and say inner join. And in this case, I'm going to join the subjects table on subjects.id. Uh, subject 
No, yes. Uh, no, I think I just called that one ID. Again, this is a handy time when you can skip back to what you previously called it. So I had subjects with an ID field here. I can say subjects.id on results.subjectid. Now, if I were to run this, this won't actually do anything, and that's because I haven't actually called any of this stuff up here. Um, although I am filtering this to this where, so I might actually ditch that for now. If I were to go right-click run, this should go back to just listing all of what I've got here. But what I can do is, whereas previously I've, I'm listing this results.subjectid, well now, quite handily, I can uh, choose to um, link it to a subject name. So I'm going to ditch this entire fourth column here, which is this one, one, two, three, four, etc. And I'm instead going to list subjects. ID. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm going to list subjects subject name. I think I called it again. Just going to refer back here, and I called it subject name within the subjects table. So what I should be able to do now is go right click, run, and it will list for me all of um, each of my students here: surname, first name, their result, and then their um, uh, the, the subject name here. Now again, just note that I'm specifying the um, the, the table name here. It's probably good just for um, consistency for me to do the same thing up here just so that I'm specifying the table with then the column name just to make it a little bit easier a little bit more readable it just means that up here under this select I always know which table this column is coming from so why do I care about this well again I can match this or pair it with um, other stuff here such as let's say I want to pair this with subject name and I want to know who's got what in English well I can do this and go right click run and this will list all of my students again but this time it gives me the name in English it just makes it a little bit easier for me to be able to filter my results or what I could do here is if I were to ditch this I could do an order by uh, surname and if I go right click run right this will give me all of the results for each student um, sorted by their surname here for extension, you might consider how you can go about now incorporating other sorts of, um, uh, of SQL commands in here, such as count, you do some averages, you could group things, etc, etc. So there's a lot of functionality that you can get just out of doing this, uh, this notion of, of a join.